Hey, welcome to Epilogue. I'm excited about this episode. Got to sit down with Brad Kaufman, one of the writers of our devotionals during our UR series. And we got to dive deep into the topic of generosity, something I think that is increasingly difficult in our culture today. And so I hope you really enjoy this episode and that it's encouraging and challenging to you. Well, Brad, thanks for joining us today, man. Appreciate you being on the podcast. So yeah, happy to be here. Is this your first podcast ever? It is. All right. All right. Hey, we're new at it too. And so okay. we're learning together, but thanks for being here. Um, all right. You you and Samantha, how long have you guys been at Faith Bible? Oh, right about probably 12 years or so. 12 years, man. Yeah. You've been here longer than I have. That's awesome. I've <laughs> been here 11, but yeah, right. so I got here after you guys. Cool. And you, I know y'all, man, y'all have just been super active in the church, um, a number of areas that you've served. Why don't you talk a little bit about kind of how you guys have been part of Faith Bible Church? I know you're involved in small group. You've been yeah. involved in different ministries. Right. Yeah. So Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. So like you said, we're, we're involved in small groups. Mm -hmm. um, so we do that. But, uh, we're also involved in the church's life groups as well. Nice. Um, so we help lead the parenting kids. Cool. Right now. Yep. Uh, and before that, we were in Parenting Littles. And before that, it was we were leading the Young Marrieds class. That's cool. Uh, so kind of like ginger. So yeah. graduating up with we did. Yeah, life stage of kids <laughs> that, and all that. Yeah. That's really that's really how it happened. Yeah. So it was, that's cool. We've, we've really been blessed in that way. So that's yeah. been great. Yeah, we that's enjoyed it. Love it, man. And you, uh, so we're going to be talking about the devotionals you wrote on generosity, and uh, we'll dive into that in a second. But um, in one of those devotionals, you mentioned just you you also are kind of a handyman. And so, like, um, if, you've, if you've never met Brad, like, man, like, you're here. I'll see you every once in a while. You pop up, and you're working on a project, like drainage for our kids' playground, right. stuff like that. And so um, a lot of things that people don't see, I mean, People may be used to you in life groups or your community that you're in and your small group, but they don't see you behind the scenes just serving in ways like that. And so just want to tell you, thanks, man. I, I really appreciate all you've done for Faith Bible Church over oh, the years. I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. No, thank you. Uh, yeah. And it's been been great being able to serve in that way. So I, and it's something that I have a passion for. So I really like being able to contribute in that way. So yeah. it's been great. Awesome, man. Well, we're, we're super grateful. Um, OK, so they're getting to know kind of the, the, the serious side of Brad Kaufman here. Um, but for folks that don't know you, we want to put you on the hot seat a little bit. Okay. And and uh, just first thing that comes to mind, you, you've played hot seat before, just some stupid questions we're going to ask you. So, okay, here we go. You ready? I hope so. Yeah, all right. All <laughs> right, we'll start eating morning person or night owl. Oh, that's a good question. Um, you can't say both, man. I know. I, I like to stay up late, but then I have to wake up early to get everything okay. get done. During I can appreciate that. So, I'm the same way. I yeah. like I like to stay up late, and then it's like my alarm goes off, and I'm like, oh. Yeah, so, so I, I probably only get about six hours of sleep. Yeah. yeah. So Same here, man. All right. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Good answer. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, the right answer. <laughs> that's right. Okay. Favorite musical genre? Ooh. Um, I really like a little bit of everything to be okay. honest. Um, like reggae included or yeah, I'll okay. throw that in there. Sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, good. Okay. Yeah, as, as, as long as I think like the, 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 the vibes are good. Right. Yeah. And I think yeah. you get a good feeling out of it. Um, I'm not so much into the stuff that just makes you feel bad, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know some of the, the, the more the depressing lyrics. I got you. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm one step up, up. As long as it's upbeat, I think I'm good with it. Yeah. yeah. Cool. I dig it. Um, Best concert you've ever been to? Staying on the music uh, theme here. Oh, that's a, that's another good question. Um, recently went to a <laughs> an Ed Sheeran concert. Ed Sheeran, yeah, with with my wife. So okay, this is crazy for her birthday. So our last our last podcast that that was the same answer. Ed Sheeran concert. This must have been a, was this a recent concert? It was yeah. Okay, it was yeah. It was at yeah. NRG Stadium. So. Ed Sheeran's incredible. Did it, was yeah. it just him acoustic or was he with yeah. a band? Yeah, yeah, well, okay. I mean, at, at certain points he would bring in other yeah. other people, but it was pretty much just him on a guitar. So it was it was excellent. He's a yeah, he's phenomenal. He's just, talented, yeah, for sure, super talented. Okay, uh, favorite book, the Bible. The Bible. <laughs> <laughs> that's that, the right answer. That's right? cheating. <laughs> yeah, that's like the, uh, okay. Um, favorite book besides the Bible. <laughs> wow. Um, gosh, I don't know if I really have. Yeah. A, a, a favorite, That's I would okay. say. Um, you know, I, I, I've, I, I, for a while, I really throughout a lot of my life, I've, I really had to dig into like, you know, self improvement type books. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, so I've really focused on that a lot. And then, yeah. and honestly, more recently, I've been digging into a lot of apologetics. It's nice. So yeah. that's been, that's yeah. kind of been my, my passion more, more that's recently cool. that it just, it's kind of like this rabbit hole of just, just amazing yeah. things that you can really dig into. Yeah. So I've really enjoyed that here. That's fun, man. Yeah. And you can, you can dive so deep on that and just keep going and keep going. So it's, yeah. that's, it's that's cool. It's great. All right. If you could have dinner with any person dead or alive, um, you can't say Jesus. Uh, who, who you said the Bible? You can't say. You can't, I know, but who who would that be? Dinner with any person, dead or alive? Wow! All right. Um, I wish I had an answer that just kind of came to my head. Yeah. Um, oh, let's say uh, Paul. Paul. Okay. <laughs> I think that would be a great one. Dude, that's a good I, one. I, think, I like yeah, it. Yeah. I mean, just his influence in the Bible yeah. has been great. I mean, like, like if I had to really think of anybody, that'd probably yeah. be the one I'd, I'd really love to like dig into his mind. I think that'd be amazing. That'd be, that'd be such a cool meal, man. You imagine asking questions. Oh, yeah. yeah it'd, be, it'd be phenomenal. That's cool. Um, okay. Final question. What's the last show you and Samantha binge watched? <laughs> well, we're actually in the process of doing it right now. Okay. Uh, All right. On, it's on Netflix. It's uh, Suits. Suits. Man, that, that's the second time I've heard that on the podcast. Really? Okay. I got to check out Suits. Yeah. Okay. I have not yeah. watched it. so It's, it's, it's been good. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Okay. Enjoy that. All right, man. Suits is coming with uh, some we're big, seeing, big we're endorsements. We're seeing a theme with Suits fans that yeah. they are also Ed Sheeran fans. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is a theme, man. Like, I don't know. Like, I... Like uh, we were joking earlier about like we we've never had any endorsements on our podcast, but maybe like I don't know we could figure out something with Ed Sheeran in suits. I, I don't know how that works, but anyway. Um, <laughs> all right, so uh, you wrote these devotionals, man. Super super enjoyed going through these last week. So thanks for just your heart around generosity. It 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 came through, and as you were writing these devotionals, and man, I I was challenged by them personally. Just going through these each day. And so just want to say thanks, but, um, also just want to, um, just see how that was. I, I would, did you enjoy doing this? Did yeah, you like no, writing them? I loved it. I loved yeah. it. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed just seeing how much, you know, the, the Bible had to say about it. Yeah. Topic, right. I mean, that, that was really, uh, pretty awesome for me to just to see, just as I'm digging into it, you know, being able to dig into one specific topic and then seeing where in the Bible it, it talks about it. And it's just, it was just so, so prevalent throughout the entire book. So it was, it's yeah. been great. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, I'll tell you, man, like I, uh, I, I met with, um, David Butler. I don't know if you know David. Mm -hmm. David Butler is one of our elders here and, um, he and his wife, Marilyn, they lead our financial stewardship class. And, mm -hmm. and I met with David and, and we were just talking about like their financial stewardship course. And, and I was like, I was like, man, like it, it feels like you read that course. And I, and, and, and so even David was like, did Brad go through like our course at some point? I was like, I don't, I don't think so. Uh, but man, like he, he's, he was ticking all those boxes. And so like, you just, I guess, you know, uh, you got a course that's just trying to figure out what the Bible says about that. And then here's you just trying to lay out what the Bible says about it. Yeah, and it's so pretty, it's pretty awesome how I, that lines up. I know. Yeah. I thought it was really cool. And so, um, it was just kind of neat to see those two things working together and like, mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so, uh, so next question is, man, like, what was most challenging about writing these devos? Yeah. Oh, well, I've never done one before. I've never yeah. done a devo, and I, I wouldn't consider myself the best writer. Okay. <laughs> you know, I, me and my wife joke about it all the time. You know, I'll get a text message, and then it takes me probably five or ten minutes just to reply to oh, figure I out get it, how man. to yeah, respond yeah. and what yeah. to say and how to say it. Um, so putting together, um, you know, the, the, the five days of devotionals um, was – you know, it was, it was a stretch for me. Mm -hmm. it, was, it definitely uh, put me outside of my comfort zone. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and, and knowing that going into it, but I, I wanted to accept the challenge and see what God had in store for me to kind of step outside of that comfort zone. Because, yeah. you know, you often hear that that's where God really kind of pours into you is when you do mm -hmm. that. So, so yeah, so no, that that was something that um that I, I was didn't really step into it being comfortable with, but yeah. coming out of it, I'm like, I'm really glad I did. So it's yeah. great. I mean, just watch out because we may ask you again, man. Like it was, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, challenge. Yourself. All right. Uh, anything as you? I mean, obviously, you, you took a deep dive study in this. You just mentioned like just trying to see what God's word says about it. Um, anything that jumped out at you in a fresh way as you studied and as you wrote this that maybe you just personally felt challenged in in kind of a new way? Sure, sure. Yeah. No, I, I would say one of the things that really kind of stood out to me uh, was the concept that. Um, 
each act of generosity is like us being a sower mm-hmm. of seed, right? Yeah, so yeah. We're, we're basically sowing, you know, Christ in, yeah. you know, as a seed into all these people's lives. And that the more we sow, the bigger the harvest, yeah. right? Yeah, so yeah. it's like the more opportunities we have to reflect Jesus and, and pour Jesus into people's lives. Yeah. Um, so that was a pretty neat concept um, yeah. that kind of stood out to me was that the, the more generous we are, the more we're putting Jesus out into this world. Yeah. So that was pretty awesome. Yeah. I, I love that too. Um, I, I, you know, Sunday I, I taught about generosity and, and dipped a little into second Corinthians nine and you, you did that in your Devo, but just this picture of the the farmer sowing. And it's like, like the imagery there you get in, in the, the word picture is like, he's just got an arm full of seeds that he's just like, yes. And it's not, it's not just like a, um, just, Okay, here, here. <laughs> right, and and exactly. which which one of those methods is going to bring a bigger harvest, like right. for the kingdom? That's right. Uh, w- one of them is is obvious, and um, mm-hmm. and then and then talking about like when you do that, like God God's going to provide for you to be able to sow seeds for His work. That's right. right. And and that's 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 what I, I loved in that imagery. And yeah, yeah same here, man. Yeah, it was great. It was cool. Um, okay, so you you mentioned that in order to have a generous mindset. Um, it's just really important to understand. It's really the concept of stewardship that everything comes from God. It all belongs to him. Um, so why do you think, I mean, I feel like it's really hard to have that mindset sometimes. Why do you think we so easily forget that truth? Why do you think we go through life and I mean, like when we're, when we're thinking about our stuff or whatever, why is it so easy to forget that it belongs to him? Yeah, well, no, I, I I think that that is often the case because we think that it's ours to begin with, mm-hmm. right? It's 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 that lack of having that that understanding that everything we have really comes from God, and all we're yeah. doing yeah. is just taking what He gave to us and giving it to somebody mm-hmm. else, right? Or yeah. being generous with it, you know. And and I liken it to you know, if I was to challenge you, for example, or somebody else, um, you know, say, hey, I, I really you know, challenge you to give $20 to somebody today, mm-hmm. right? You, know, you might feel a little reluctant to do that. Well, I worked really hard yeah. for this and it's mine, right? Like 20 bucks, but man. If, but if I reached in my wallet and gave you $20. I thought you were about to give me Well, no, I, I mean, I, no, I just, I, no, I'm just kidding. So, so if, if I, I, I reach in my wallet too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if I, if, if I gave you $20 and said, hey, I need you to give this to somebody. Yeah. Right? Well, it probably, you know, it may be a little easier for you mm-hmm. to do that, right? Mm-hmm. And not only is it maybe easier because you're like, you know, it's not yours to begin with, yeah. right? But you're also prepared. You have it in your hand and you're able to give it to somebody, yeah. right? Um, so That's a really good analogy, about. I mean... Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think so, right? So when, when you look at it from the same perspective of like everything I have is not really mine, mm-hmm. it's God's. Right. So I'm able to just give that to somebody else. Yeah. You know, it kind of releases that some of the, some of that burden, yeah. right. That you may have thinking that, you know, hey, I earned this. I deserve this. Right. When yeah. it's actually God's. Because again, it's it's almost like if you gave that twenty dollar bill to somebody and said, Oh, look, look what I did to earn this twenty dollar bill. Well, you really didn't. Yeah. Right. Because it's all God's. Yeah. So that that's kind of a it's a, a, that's the way that I like to think about it. Yeah. And it, you know, it's funny you bring that up. I've actually had somebody do that, like give me like a, a hundred bucks and say, Hey, go give this. Find. I want you to find somebody to give this to. And I was like, That's really cool. Like, because mm-hmm. because it did, like it did uh, cause me like just to start looking around for people yeah. to be generous to. And so like. Man, if we really did, I mean, that's like a real life application, what you're just saying. Like, if we really considered everything is coming from him, we're looking for opportunities to give it away. That's right. right. Like, exactly. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, a lot of times we just have the, the blinders on, right? Because we're, yeah. we're so consumed with our own lives mm-hmm. and what we have going on that we don't really take the time to see what everybody else has going on and the needs that need to be met outside yeah. of your life. Cause I know a lot of times, especially right now, we all have a lot of needs that need to be met for ourselves. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's sometimes it's difficult, you know, to your point to, to look outside of yourself yeah. and see the needs of others and to be able to pour into their life. Yeah. And I, I think, I mean, you're just hitting on some, I like when, like, man, when our economy's struggling and we have fears and man, like, gosh, I feel like every time I turn around, somebody I know is getting laid off or whatever. And it's just, it's hard because it's, it's hard to, I mean, in that moment we get into this fight or flight, like, no, like, I, I got to yeah. protect and I got to keep it to myself because I don't know what the future holds. And, you know, and gosh, like when, when we forget that, well, 
God holds my future. Yeah. God holds my stuff. That's right. Like, uh, you know, it, it shifts our, our mindset. I also think like, is you, is you, something you said in there too, um, made me think like, we live in a world where y- you, uh, like we earn it, right? Like everything I have is hard. I work hard for it. It's mine. You know? So when you work hard for something in a job or whatever it is, like it's, it's this anti-grace mentality like that. I, I earn everything. And so I, that nothing comes for free, right? It's like this. Um, and, and it is, there is this concept of, um, sowing and reaping, but, but at the same time, like that's not, that's not, how it goes with God in terms of what we get, right, right. and what we have, it, it comes from Him, right? right? And, and that's where like, we can't that, earn it, yeah, right. And that's where that 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 mindset of realizing, well, your capacity to work, your mm-hmm. the the breath that you have in your lungs comes from God. That's right, right. Everything, yeah, even you have, that, yeah, right. So your your ability to to earn what you earn for a livelihood, you know, all of that is God's, right? That's right, yeah. Um, so you know, if you can get to that level of understanding, it definitely helps free yourself to be a more cheerful giver for sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So one of, one of the passages you, you camped out a little bit on, and I love this picture in it's in first Chronicles 29. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, I'll, I'll just read verse 14. Uh, this is David speaking and it says, who am I and who are my people that we should be able to offer as generously as this for all things come from you. That's what we're talking about. And from your hand, we, we have given to you. And so, like, obviously, the context is um, David's at the end of his reign. Uh, Solomon's taken the throne. Uh, God had promised David that Solomon would build the temple. And so here's David uh, giving riches, and and the people are giving riches uh, to him to give to the temple. And just this awesome outpouring of generosity. Right. Um, and then uh, verse uh, 9 says, Then the people rejoiced because they had offered so willingly for they made their offering to the Lord wholeheartedly. And, and King David also rejoiced greatly. And and so like, you just see a ton of joy there. I mean, it's like just people giving of their wealth and David's giving of his, and like, I think it's, it's sometimes hard for us to think of giving is that joyful. Sure. What 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 do you think stands in the way of us giving cheerfully like that? Like that's a beautiful snapshot of cheerful giving. Yeah. Well, I, I, no, I, I think you're right. Um, you know, I, I think the way that um, you know King David's mindset was was perfect mm-hmm. there, right? Like mm-hmm. again, everything comes from God, um, and a lot of times I think that it's it's the sacrifice. Right, yeah. that has to go into it because yeah. it's you know it's it's either, either money or it's time, right? Because a lot of times, you know, time can be a bigger sacrifice than money. Because yeah. I might be able to like, yeah, here's five dollars. That's easy compared to oh, you want five minutes, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And sometimes it's harder to give of time than it is of money, um, or, or other things, right? Yeah. Um, other resources. So um, I think it's some of the sacrifice that that's involved with it. Mm-hmm. But again, when you have that that mindset of it's not really mine. So there's not really the sacrifice is just just transferring it from my hands to somebody else's when it wasn't mine to begin with. So yeah. um, so I think having that mindset helps a lot, that having that selflessness. Yeah, I agree. You know, time is probably one of the hardest things for me to be generous with. I mean, honestly, like, yeah, I mean, Jason and I had a meeting scheduled for last Thursday. I canceled on him and, and, uh, I'll be honest, I was studying this text, Jason. I haven't even told you this, Jason, but I was like, dang, I was just pre- prepping for my sermon on Sunday, thinking about generosity when it comes to time, talent, treasure. And I was like, I I struggled to be generous with my time. And and I struggled to trust God in that moment that I could still meet with Jason right, and right. and still and that he would give me the time I need, right? Sure. And uh and so that's something. Uh, he's teaching me. Lord's teaching me. It's generosity with my time, and uh, man, that's that's a hard one because uh, we, you know, time's one of those limited resources. But can we trust God with it, and that He can give us enough? Yep. Yeah. So, um, um, you talked about um your dad mm-hmm. being pivotal in your life. You talked about him teaching you, um, even like just we we mentioned you're you're a handy guy, like yeah. so he he taught you how to be handy, um. And and so obviously this is this is passed from your dad to you. Then you talked about like praying with your kids, like a routine prayer, bless us so we can bless others. And so, um, man, like 
this world is increasingly self-centered. I mean, it's the sure. the selfie culture. Like we're absorbed with ourselves, and um, and and so like our kids are growing up in that. What are some ways? You mentioned this prayer. What are some other ways that we can instill a sense of generosity into in our kids? Sure. Yeah. No. Good. Good question. Um, I, I like to think of it in maybe two ways of of you know having that perspective of ownership, mm-hmm. right? Um, and also leadership, right? So. Um, you know, just to expand on the prayer that I, you know, I didn't want to put my whole prayer, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, that in, in the devotional. Um, but you know, when I'm praying with my kids at night, um, you know, the, the, it goes like really more like this, um, you know, God, thank you for all the things that you've blessed us with. Everything is yours. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, we ask that you please continue to bless us so we can use your blessings to bless others, mm-hmm. to lead them to Christ. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that's, that's, cool. that's it. Right. So, you know, we kind of start with the thank you for everything that we have because it's all yours. And then, you know, an, an ask of, hey, can you please continue to bless us so that we can continue to pour in other people's lives and help lead them to Christ. Right. Yeah. So, um, and then the other part of that, you know, so helping to develop that mindset with your kids that, you know, everything we have is not really ours yeah. because, you know, like, even like you mentioned on Sunday, right. It's mine, mine, mine. Yeah. Kids are just naturally, even yeah. as, as adults, we tend to think about yeah. that as well. This is mine. Yeah. Um, so having that mind attitude and kind of releasing yourself of that. Yeah. Um, and then on the leadership perspective, um, you know, like for example, you know, I mentioned the parenting kids class, right? Mm-hmm. So one of the challenges that we gave everybody just some, for some internal reflection is, you know, if I was to go up to your kids and ask them if their parent, if your parents are generous, mm-hmm. what would they say? And could they list some ways that you were generous, right? Yeah. Boy, that's a and, convicting you know, question. Yeah, it, I mean, yeah, yeah, it is, you know, and so just to kind of reflect on that a little bit internally, right? So how are you modeling generosity for your mm-hmm. kids so that they can see it and also be a part of it? Yeah. Right? Are you, you know, volunteering with them, right, to impact other people's lives? Are they seeing you be generous with your time, your, re- you know, your, mm-hmm. your treasures and, and the things that you have, right? So yeah. um, so I think that's a, that's a very... Um, convicting, but also yeah. real way that you can impact your kids in that way to help model that for them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that a lot. I mean, that's, yeah, that, that question. Yeah. You, you, I'm, st- I'm, I'm maybe still stuck on that question, dude. Like would, <laughs> would people say your parents are generous and I'm maybe like doing some introspection yeah, here, but yeah. that's a great, that man, that's a challenging question. Right. Like modeling is so important and right. yeah. Uh, you know, we, we, uh, I know for our kids, um, Man, especially like gr- growing up. I mean, they're they're teenagers now, and so like we're we're letting them make their own choices. But putting those training wheels on for a while, like man, whenever they got money for anything, whether it's like allowance for doing something or um, birthday gift, Christmas gift, it was like, okay, look, here's 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 the way we're gonna do this. Like, you you give a third, you save a third, you spend a third. That's right. And I mean, that's just this principle of like understanding that like this is yeah, like I, I'm gonna. I'm going to enjoy kind of what's, what's left over. Like, you know, after I, after I do these other things with it and, you know, and I, it's funny. I asked one of my kids, uh, last week, I was like, we used to, we used to do, do you still do that? Like, and she's like, well, I don't, I don't do it that way anymore, but I do give like the, and I, in this, you know, I usually think like about the amount like of money I get. And then I give that. And I'm like, good man yeah, that's yeah, awesome that you know awesome. and um and so just just thinking about that and putting some of those training wheels on for, right. on them for a bit i i think is helpful too and then yeah not and then releasing them to not like live in that legalistically yeah. but you know no. it's just building those those reflexes in and, yeah no i yeah. i agree it, it's it's all about you know helping to train your kids but mm-hmm. yourself as well being intentional about being generous mm-hmm. Right. Like that's, yeah. that's, that's the difficult part. Cause a lot of times it's often an afterthought of I'm yes. going to take care of me first yeah, and then whatever's left over, I might be able to be generous with. But if yeah. you go up front and say, I'm going to be intentional about making sure that I can be generous and will that's be right. generous yeah. and instill and helping to instill that in your kids, like yeah. that, that, that's when everything kind of changes everything. Yeah. Works, yeah. Man. Yeah. I, I think too, um, I think actually like, like praying about what you're, you're being generous toward, you know, like if, mm-hmm. like, so like I, a big thing in our family is uh, like, we, uh, we, we've just always had a hand in missions. And so like uh, a big part of like where we're generous financially is missions. And so we have a list of 
uh, of people that we know and love that are all over the world that we support. And, and so just even with our kids, bringing them into that, praying for these missionaries, talking about them. And then, and then it's cool when they go, I want to give to this yeah. person. I, right. I like, I want to give to that person out of my money. And so like, I think that's been a cool way is, is not just, not just seeing them like seeing like us give it away to people, but seeing us engage in prayer and, um, and like when those folks are in town, we meet with them. So they yeah. see like, and they hear stories about what God's doing with the money, like we're giving to to those folks in their right. ministries. And I think that's just, that's been super valuable for our kids too. Yeah, that's just awesome, connecting it to stories and connecting it to real life. And yeah. Yeah, so. I agree. That's great. Um, one of the things, man, I, and, and I got to tell you, I, I really loved this, this idea of being prepared to be generous. Yeah. Um, it's, I mean, it's something actually, I, I really wanted to talk about Sunday. And, and so I'm glad <laughs> I didn't get to it, but I'm glad you talked about it. Cause it was like the, you know, in second Corinthians that you got this Macedonian church and, um, they're like, gosh, like they don't have much and they're in this deep poverty. But the text actually says that they gave the amount that they purposed beforehand, mm -hmm. right? They, they were prepared. And, and so, you know, you mentioned just like, like an idea of like having a special bank account that right. you're, you're, that's just dedicated to that. So what are some other ways like we can be prepared and, and it doesn't have to be just like financially or with our bank account, but even just mentally and mm -hmm. like a, and like on a heart level, how can we be prepared to be generous? Yeah. Well, and like, like you said, um, you know, we, we talked about, about, uh, from a mindset, right. Mm -hmm. Having that mindset up front that, um, you know, it's not really mine, everything mm -hmm. I have, you know, the, like the breath in my lungs, mm -hmm. my skill set, you know, every, my finances and even my time, right. We talked about that. Uh, a lot. And and that's where being prepared with even, you know, how am I proactively allocating time in my schedule yeah. to be generous, right? Yeah. A am I finding time to volunteer, right? Am I finding time at night? Because I know sometimes I can be even, you know, a victim of this is, you know, oh, that, that suits episode is come, you know, I know it's waiting <laughs> on me. So cool. kids, sorry, your time is short tonight. Yeah. Right. You know, and I yeah. just really want to kind of put go it to bed, bed early. Yes. Yeah. Bed, go to bed early. I, I, I need a break, uh -huh. you know, and I, I want to go watch my, my episode and eat some Cheetos and not think about anything. Right. Yeah, Cheetos are great. Sorry. Yeah. That's another endorsement. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Right. Um, but that's, you know, how are we proactively trying to make sure that we are allocating that time where yeah. it really matters and, and to sowing that seed. Right. Yeah. Finding the opportunities to do that, um, and and even our skill sets, right? Being prepared. How are we developing our skill sets, right, yeah. to further uh, influence the impact that um, that of, of the resources that God has given us? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think I think that's that's great, man. I, you know, um, like I don't ever want to be caught off guard in a moment either. Like when when I'm challenged to be generous and not, you know what I mean? Like right, sure. Like that. I think that's the danger of not being prepared in all these different ways of like. What, what if God gives you that opportunity and you're not prepared and then you move on and you're like, oh man, like I, would, I regret that. Like right. I, I, I'm, man, right. I've regretted some moments where it's like, ah, oh, like I, that it was right there and I didn't do it. We're, we'll get to that in a second, okay. particularly related to people in need that we pass by. And sure. um, I've regretted some of those moments. Um, but also like, um, you know, I, I can, I can think of moments where Heather and I are meeting with a, a, a person that, it's going, going overseas on the mission field. And like, uh, I, I think of even preparation as being like, when we sit down, um, like it's a good feeling when they leave and Heather and I look at each other and, and we, we both go, yeah, I think we want to do that at this amount. And it's like, we're just lock in step on the same page. And, and that's like, and I can remember other moments where we weren't in that same, but we weren't prepared for that. And so I think, I think just, even being prepared as a couple or as a family, like on just being on the same page on, on where we're at and, and our readiness and, you know, Agreed. just some things like that. Yeah. You really got me thinking about that on that, <laughs> that being prepared. So. Yeah. Well, even on the prepared, you know, I, it's a message I have with my own kids. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and I think I, I mentioned it in the devotional as well uh, about just taking care of your things. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and yeah, you man, know, like, yeah. So mm -hmm. just even making sure like, you know, the things that we have in this world that, you know, that, that we can actually use them to bless somebody else. So if you take care of what you have, then you can help yeah. bless somebody else with it. You know, part of being a good steward. Yeah, man. yeah. exactly. Uh, right. That's good. Um, all right. So being generous to, to people in need. All right. So I think this is, this can be maybe one of the trickiest parts for, for, 
particularly for us as, as believers, right? Like we uh, we want to be wise stewards. Uh, you gave this awesome example of how how you bless someone that you pass by on the street, and they said, "Hey, I like are you a Christian? You know, because right. you're the only one that ever pays any attention to me." And you got to pray with them. You, uh, and so I think sometimes for us, like we, we might pass by a homeless person with a sign or, you know, somebody selling flowers on a street corner and, uh, and man, immediately like stereotypes start to come to our heads. Like what, what do they, what do they get really using the money for? And we struggle with that because we, there, there's this tension point, right? Like, man, I want to help somebody in need, but I also want to be a wise steward and is. Ah, what do I do? You know, sure. and so, um, so sometimes we just we lock the door, we avoid eye contact. We all know what that's right. like. But so, what are your thoughts as someone who's engaged in that? You know, you gave that example. What are your thoughts on how we should, what we should do as Christians in those moments? Yeah, no, that's a great question, and I think it's a common question that a lot of people struggle mm-hmm. with. Right? Is what do I do in in the moments like this? Right? Yeah. Um, you know, and one of the ways that I like to uh, to think about it, right, is, is one, you know, how is the Holy Spirit guiding me in this moment, mm-hmm. right? You know, and just kind of let let the Holy Spirit help guide you, right? Yeah. Because sometimes you may feel led to to give in a certain way or, you know, what that looks like. Um, but then beyond that, um, you know, because I, I think a lot of us, some of the struggle is that, like you mentioned, a lot of us have either been burned or we know somebody who has mm-hmm. been burned in a way. Um, of somebody taking advantage of somebody's generosity, sure. yeah. right? Or, or not really, you know, being misleading about about it and taking advantage of someone. Um, but one of the ways that uh, kind of helps me get over that hump a little bit, mm-hmm. right, if, if you want to call it that, um, is that, you know, let's let's say, for example, if it's somebody who's in need and asking for some money, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, yeah, the, the, the money may need, meet the physical need, but the greater need that we all have mm-hmm. is Jesus. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so whenever I am helping to meet maybe whatever that physical need is or whatever that need is at the moment with the generosity, um, you know, I also like to throw in something about Jesus. Yeah. With it, yeah. Right. That's good. Um, so, you know, and again, if, if you, if, again, being prepared, you know, if you want to have like a scripture, Kind of in, in you know written on a piece of paper with yeah. a twenty dollar bill or whatever it looks like for you, or when you're having a conversation with that person, bringing up Jesus, you know, God yeah. bless you, you know, Jesus loves you, right? And then all of a sudden, it, the conversation goes away from, well, is the money going to be handled well, or whatever I'm sacrificing or giving, compared to, you know, hey, I've planted the seed of Jesus That's right. into this person. Yeah. And, you know, now it's up to the Holy Spirit and, and, you know, and let's see where this, mm-hmm. where this goes. Right. So yeah. that, that, yeah. that's the way, cause he, everybody needs Jesus. It doesn't right. matter if it's somebody who's going to use the money or the, the resources in, in a, in the right way or, mm-hmm. in, you know, or, or not in the right way. Either way, everybody needs Jesus. So yeah. that's the way I kind of like to look at it. Yeah. And I think, man, that, that approach, uh, it humanizes a, that that person you're talking to because you, you're caring about them as an individual. It, right. You know, like that story of you passing by that guy on the street and him saying, "Hey, man, like something's different about you. Nobody even pays attention to me." It's because you valued him as a human, and right. you know, like man, like made in God's image. I, you know, man, we're and all brothers and sisters. That's that's right. Yeah. And then and then that opportunity that you said, "Hey, can I pray with you?" But then what was cool about that for me is like. You didn't just do James like what James two warns about, like of like, hey, go go and be filled. Like, right. I mean, yeah, you know, exactly. like you said, hey, hey I, I don't know, I got to pray with you. I just I want to give you some money to help, right? Right. And and that's that made an impact on that guy that day because it wasn't just hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna meet a spiritual need here in the moment. I'm also gonna meet a physical need. And mm-hmm. um, when we bring those two things together and and value them as a person, it, it's it's not just about like shoving money through a, you know, a, a crack in my window. Right. It's right. like, no, exactly. I, I don't know, like, Hey, I want to, I want to have a conversation with you. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and sometimes man, like people will tell you if they're not interested in that. Like I, I've, I've had a moment, uh, I remember, um, a homeless gentleman asked me like for some money and I said, Hey, could I like, there's a, there's a Burger King. Could I take you to lunch and just man, get to know you and talk and He's like, nah, I don't want it for food, and and just talk, just straight up with me, and sure. and so I think I think what when we value a person and we talk to them, then then 
like yeah we let them well, <laughs> continue it, or not it so. gives you an opportunity to bring up jesus that's in, right in that yeah. conversation yeah. right so use it right yeah. use it as an opportunity to to plant the seed of christ into that individual that's right uh, in in that moment of need and you know and, and again the more seeds you plant the greater the harvest, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, all, it all circles back, right? So uh, that, that's what that's and that's why I've I've loved, you know, diving into this topic of generosity so much, just because of how kind of everything ties in together, right? Yeah. And how the, the topic of selflessness and how Jesus, you know, modeled that and how we can help to do that in our lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, and it, and you just said it. It's all about the gospel. It's all about people. It's all and the harvest is is. Gosh, kingdom work, gospel right. conversations, right. people coming to know Jesus, and 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 that is why we're generous. Ultimately, is is because God's given us so much grace, and we want to offer it to the to the world around us. And so, um, yeah, I think I think that that actually challenges like any of these like uh, you know, there's a lot of ministries around that are like, hey, um, if if you give this much, God's gonna increase your personal wealth, and it's like. That's a distortion of those texts, right? Because the abundance that he's talking about is not is not for you to hold on to. Like it's not that's not what it's about. He's saying, I'm gonna provide what you need to live on and what you need to be generous for my gospel and right. and, and the sake of the work I'm doing in the world. And so yeah. Yeah, no, that's right. And 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 the riches are really the sanctification process. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. It's you becoming through your generosity, becoming more like Christ. Mm -hmm. And then your treasures are really in heaven. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so it, it, it's all about becoming more like Christ. And every time you're generous, you're reflecting Christ to this world. That's right, man. You know, and and it's helping you become more like Him. So that that that's the part that really, um, you know, yeah. spoke spoke very loudly to me. Yeah, well. that's the richness and the blessing we get. Yeah. It's just the joy of it, becoming more like Christ. Yeah, that's that's a good word, man. So. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, Brad, thank you so much, man. Really appreciate you, just what you guys mean to our church and uh, appreciate you writing these devos and jumping on here to talk a little bit more about generosity. So thanks for the way you model it. Thanks for the way you you give of your time, talent, and treasure. And uh, man, we are, we are better for it. So appreciate, appreciate it, that. No, no. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Awesome. Appreciate it. Thanks. Hey, thanks for joining us today. Um, join us next time as we finish out our UR series podcasts. And um, yeah, we'll see you next time. <laughs>